Hi everyone, welcome to our third lecture in the series on Marketing 5110 which is Social Class and Consumer Behaviour. Some people argue that social class doesn't play as strong a role as it used to, but of course uh, why you, that may be debatable, status symbols as you can see in the opening slide will always be important. Some of the learning objectives that we'll, we'll cover today. What are some of the characteristics of social class systems? All societies, groups, organisations have a class system of one sort or another and we'll, we'll discuss those today. How we measure and categorise social class, how it then affects consumer behaviour and is it useful for us to consider in terms of market segmentation. Definition of social class is shown on this society, on this, society, on this slide rather, and it's as consisting of roughly a number of people who have approximately the equal, equal positions in society. Now, what can determine your position? You might think wealth, uh, you might think education, uh, it can also include reputation, it can include where you live, or even who you've married. Social classes also exhibit status. So there is generally a rank in, social, in a social class system. Status itself or likability or prestige can be determined by factors such as power, income, occupation, amongst others. Is there a social class system in Australia? Well, one way of looking at this is to look at the income distribution within Australia. In real terms, the average disposable income did, has increased marginally between those two years. Actually, it fell, it fell a little bit. The wealthiest 20% of households in Australia account for about 62% of total net worth with an average net worth of 2.2 million, whereas the poorest have only 1% of net worth with an average of 31,000 per household. So immediately this points to the existence of a social class system within Australia. And the, according to the Australian Bureau, of statistics and the sources down there, income inequality has increased between 1994-95 to the last when it was last measured in 2009-10. So it looks like we do have a social class system in Australia, one based primarily on wealth. Some other factors that might affect social class besides wealth though, I think, uh, are listed below, so education, where you live, wealth and of course occupation. And so some of the components are listed down there as well. Social classes are also hierarchical. They range vertically from low to high status, regardless of the society we look at, we find that. Generally, and unfortunately, they tend to restrict behaviour. We tend to associate people with our own social class. We'll go to the school with the same social class, we'll live in a area with social class, and unfortunately the rich marry the rich, and we will marry someone within our own social class. Social classes, therefore, are rel relatively homogeneous. They're a bit like subcultures that we looked at earlier. And this allows marketers to effectively segment according to this area. Now, social class systems, however, are not closed. They can be dynamic or they can be open or closed. So a closed system is one that's, built, that's based on racial background, such as the caste system in India, or who you're married to, such as um, uh, the class system in the United, United Kingdom. And so these are relatively closed systems. In Australia we have an open system, although it is generally difficult to immediately change your social class system just by the acquisition of wealth. So social class includes something besides wealth and power. It also includes reputation. So that's why the last point is important here. And that's often why the education of your children is an often important driver into uh, moving you up the social class ladder. Now there are a number of ways of measuring social class which we should be familiar with. One is what we might call the class consciousness method or the subjective method where we ask people to rank themselves in the social class hierarchy. Although, and if you look at the textbook there and on the slider on the sorry modules I have, most people, particularly in Australia, tend to rank themselves as middle or working class. A more accurate one or approach is what we call the sociometric method where if we look at a small society, say Bathurst or Orange or a small country town or a small village, we can ask people to rank each other and this, this is often a very good measure of social class within a small group or society. But of course, if we look at a large city, it becomes um, somewhat problematic. 
problematic for us to use this approach. Another way is what we call the objective measure, and where we, we assign people a score based on a weighting of characteristics such as income, occupation, address, and so on. Now, if you're going to use one individual measure for your social class, the measure is usually, that's usually used is occupation. And that's really because occupation only determines income. It determines, to a certain extent, your reputation. Uh, this is a list from Reader's Digest from a few years ago of the most trusted occupations in Australia. And you can see that ambulance drivers are at the top. And unfortunately for us, marketers are somewhere down the bottom, although we are still ahead of pol politicians. Now, that's important because politicians have power, but on this social class structure, they are not ranked very highly. Of course, there are problems in measuring social class. Uh, basically, it's an average of status dim dimensions, particularly if you look at the ob objective. So we can have one who's, we can have somebody like a plumber who scores high on income, but low on something like education. The effects of mobility are ignored, since it's, a, it's determined that your social class status is assumed to be stable. So people's income, people's occupations does change, and of course, their status may well change as a result of that as well. Generally, it's an average for an entire family. So what is the social class of a nurse married, say, to a politician or, a, um, uh, or somebody married to a professor or somebody married to a Duchess of uh, Cambridge? So the social class may be usually is determined by the chief income earner, or well, and that is usually the adult male in, in, when we do these, uh, this research. But of course, there are problems in doing that approach. Okay, so given these limitations, what are some of the research suggested about uh, social class and consumer behaviour? Well, quite a bit. This research goes back about 30, 40 years, and, we, and they, the, the results seem to be fairly stable, and we'll have a look at some market examples here. So the established social class, the old money class, these people don't purchase to impress others. These are quite conservative and, are, and use more services than goods. So, for example, gardening services uh, and so on. The nouveau riche or the, or the uh, new, new uh, rich people, these people are oriented towards spending to show success, and we call this conspicuous consumption. Upper middles, they're more interested in products that display uh, other, other class or a status symbol and use purchases to display success. Um, those below, more about social acceptability, and these people tend to be more conservative. Here are some various status appeals, the Visa card, gold in Singapore, and you can see Singapore is very much society driven by a social class. He who has the gold makes the rules, and you can see the use of services and the indulgence of the pet there. Hamlet Cigars, which is this advertisement over here, shows a more conservative class appeal, making fun of the nouveau riche. Happiness is a cigar called Hamlet, the mild cigar. Okay, you can see there that uh, uh, this, this ad is really targeting those people in the upper class that are making fun of the nouveau riche. Some other generalisations then. Working class people, their, their purchases tend to be more for security, recognition, respectability and ease of housework. These are more do-it-yourselfers, so these are more likely to people who purchase hardware in, lar in large amounts and more likely to do their own renovations and so on. Lower classes, interestingly, that when you're very poor, you will spend to try and alleviate your suffering to not be reminded that you actually are in, in fact poor, and we call this compensatory consumption. There are also some major differences in shopping behaviour. The upper classes here are seen as better sh shoppers. They often have more time, high, more highly educated, and they will lean towards specialty stores. Middle class are more driven by value. Interestingly, the working class, although we, why we would expect these people on lower incomes to search more widely, these people have strong store loyalty and therefore are not necessarily driven by value price purchasing. They often will pay more. 
Lower classes also rely largely on impulse and the use of credit, unlike um, the middle and upper classes who use credit mainly as a convenience. And that's another major difference. So which social class does this product appeal to? Allegas and attitude. Well, this would appeal to the upper social classes rather than the nouveau riche social class because the 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 product there is displaying elegance and conservatism rather than trying to impress a large number of people. What social classes are targeted here? Here we have two advertisements and I'll run them and I'll I'll ask you or I'll ask you to think about which kinds of social classes uh, these advertisements are targeted to. There's two things that define a man. His left hand and his right. Take a look at yours. They look familiar, don't they? What have they done lately? Where are the clues? Every scar is a memory. Each callous a job done. Because when it's handmade, it's made well. Hand cut, hand polished, and then handed down. You can lend one, give one, raise one. Be hands on. Get them dirty. Yep, you can tell a lot about a man by his hands. Okay, let's look at the second advertisement. There's an easier way to give your cat chef-inspired cuisine. Fancy Feast Sensations. A delicious range of culinary creations, especially for cats. She deserves nothing less. Okay, so if you want to view these two advertisements, um, I've got the two links here. And really, the first advertisement, of course, is for working class campaign. Victoria Bitter has very much in Australia has linked itself to the working class. The second of course is for the upper middle class which is Perina Katsu. And you can see paradoxically as we'll look at social class later on that they tend to relate really well be useful for items that don't involve a high degree of expenditure but which do reflect an underlying lifestyle. Also social classes will vary according to how they will respond, respond to different promotion of appeals and different media use. Upper middle class tend to read more magazines and watch less television, listen to FM radio, particularly classic FM. Upper middles tend to listen to FM radio, upscale magazines such as the Bulletin uh, and magazines in television. So as we go down the social class, more television is watched. Middle class, readers digests, newspapers, well I guess what that would be replaced now by uh, morning uh, television regarding the media and online viewing. Working class, these are heavy consumers towards AM radio such as Alan Jones and so on, heavy television users and interestingly tabloid newspapers such as the Sun in Sydney. Sorry, the Data Telegraph in Sydney, Sun's in of course in the UK. Lower class, these, see, these they read even fewer newspapers and magazines than do the working class. So there's some major differences in the type of media people use. There's also differences in the way these classes view price. Lower price, price customers, lower class customers, are not informed well of price because they're brand loyal and product alternatives. Working class people believe strongly in a price quality relationship. Upper classes use credit cards for convenience while lower classes use them for instalment purchases. So there's major differences in price behaviour and credit behaviour across these social classes. Now, even if you don't believe the social classes exist, there are social class lifestyles that we aspire to. And there are, of course, differences in values and attitudes between each of the social classes as well. And even if they're determined by income, status symbols will always remain important. And this is shown by this advertisement from Hong Kong Shanghai Bank called Mr. Popular. Why this feeling? In Australia, 13% of women say they admire celebrities. To 
42% of young Russians, businessmen are heroes. <laughs> While in Brazil, 80% of women admire plastic surgeons. Different points of view are welcome here. HSBC, the world's local bank. So, Mr. Wonderful, Mr. Popper is a social class lifestyle that a lot of people would uh, seek to admire to, and the bank, of course, is a means of inspiring to that lifestyle. There are also some other, um, and uh, well, I guess the next decision is well, how does income and social class then relate to consumer behaviour patterns? Interestingly, most researchers found that you know, just being able to buy something and your income is much more useful in generally than just relying on social class. Since many products such as luxury cars, uh, expensive holidays are classless in their appeal. Also there is a difference for a degree of status incongruency between the social class. So even amongst the, uh, if you might call it the landed gentry of the United Kingdom, there are people with high, medium and low incomes in that social class group. And so this means that social class by itself isn't particularly useful sometimes. When then is it a good idea to use social class? Well as hinted earlier, it's superior into areas that don't involve high consumer expenditure but do involve high dollar expenditures, that's so do not involve dollar expenditures but reflect under, underlying lifestyles or highly visible products. So perfume and alcohol are two classic areas where social class structures are important. And we saw that earlier with uh, cat food and of course uh, Victoria Bitter. The combination, if we use social class and income, that's generally useful for products that are classless and are highly visible, require a moderate substantial expenditure. So flooring or house shopping, and as we've got down here, some of the um, um, luxury products associated with women's cosmetics and lifestyles. So hopefully you found this useful. There is a lot to discover in social class. You also, I guess, need to uh, consult the, the text in the way. I've only really uh, done a skeleton view for you today. But we've looked at the nature of social class. We've looked at how it's measured, and it can be measured by a reputation uh, objective or even by a single measure, which can be occupation. We looked at some social class behaviour and how, it, sorry, how consumer behaviour is of different social classes and there seems to be quite a bit still in that. And we looked at the use of social class versus that of income and it's probably a good idea to use both. But, and uh, remember what I said about social class being superior to income, interestingly in areas that don't involve high dollar expenditure. So hopefully that's been useful for you today and I look forward to getting some feedback in this lecture from you. See you later.